So today we're going to go into mostly accessory work and how to modify the rep method in order to make sure that you make huge gains. So today, let's go over all the different areas and the way that we modify the rep method to make massive progress. But before we get into how to modify the rep method, we have to understand what the rep method is. And the rep method is sub-maximal weights utilized usually until fatigue. So if you read some of the top level books, what you're gonna find is that motor units that are not recruited and exhausted are not used or gained in any way, shape, or form. What does that mean? That means that the repetition method has to be used almost completely until failure in order to get maximal results. But now that we know till failure, how do we define what failure is and how do we modify that in order to compensate for the law of accommodation? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a few ways of how to modify your repetition method, mostly based in your accessory work on how to keep things fresh, fun, and making progress. The first way to modify the repetition effort method is to not think about reps at all. It's actually to think about tempos. And if you don't know what tempos are, we have another YouTube video based on tempos, so I suggest that you watch it. But for today, we'll go into it a little bit. Tempos are slowing down the lift almost, uh, what do you call it? When you do, oh, okay. Slowing down the lift deliberately. What does that mean? That means either on the way up or on the way down, you're making a count, say a three second up, three second down, five second up, five second down. You're trying to make those different kinds of variables to make sure that the muscles are basically a thrown a WTF all the time. So I like to use tempos on exercises that I may not be able to modify, i.e. there's only so many ways you can modify a normal tricep extension. There's only so many ways you can modify a leg curl. But if you start throwing in tempos, watch how far your strength drops, but your gains increase. Meaning that it's a new stimulus, it's a different time under tension, therefore it's going to increase muscle density motor unit recruitment, and therefore long-term progress. Another way that we vary the repetition method here at Ludus Magnuson Winning Strength is we use timed sets. Now, what does that mean? That means we're not really concerned with how fast or slow the repetition is. Say we're doing a set of 10, we're going to actually time how long it takes to do it versus instead of saying, I'm gonna do a set of 10, I'm gonna do a set of 45 seconds or a minute. Now this sounds crazy, but it actually makes the muscles have to work completely different. Everybody has their own timing of the way they like to push things down and raise things up. Sometimes the stronger you get, the faster you get, and that's okay for warmups. But for accessories, sometimes slowing things down is gonna give you more bang for your buck by reducing the stretch reflex. Time sets allow you to kind of attack an exercise a completely different way by saying, I don't care how many reps I get, I'm just gonna keep moving for 45 seconds upwards of a minute. Now what I like about 45 seconds upwards to a minute, it seems that if the weights are almost correct, that seems to be the maximum in lactate threshold. So if you're setting, say you're a 250 pound bencher, do 35 pound dumbbells on a warm up for a whole minute and find out how bad that burns versus just having a mindset of a set of 10. The next thing that we can adjust and modify is we can actually just go to failure. So we talked about time and just going for a certain amount of time. We talked about tempos, which usually is regulated by a rep scheme. Sometimes we can just put something on and go, I'm going to go until I cannot go anymore. That's a great way to do accessory work as well because sometimes you might be limited how heavy your stacks are, how heavy the leg curl can go, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe you're working out in a hotel. Well, if you just say, I'm going to take these 30 pound dumbbells and press them till failure, you're going to get maximal motor unit recruitment because of going to actual contractual failure. So what I like to do is I'll pick a weight. I don't know how many reps I'm going to get. I just go until I die. And that is a great way to hit accessory work and use the repetition method in a different way. So we had kind of tempos, time sets, and now we have stuff till failure. So there's three ways, but we still have another one. The next thing that I think is vastly underutilized because you don't see a lot of it and it's not very educated to the general population is using chaotic exercises in order to attack the rep method. What does that mean? That means making something more unstable. How do we do that? Well, if we're holding a dumbbell, we would actually hold a plate and then we would take a double over band and put it through the hole and then hold the band. And now you got weights that are jostling this way, causing you to have to be unstable. Another way you could do it is to have the band bell bamboo bars and hang weights from those. It's a great way to do the repetition method because it's going to limit the intensity of the weight. 
but it's going to drastically increase the intensity of able to control the actual weight, meaning that the stabilizers are going to get a lot of activation. They're going to get super strong at the same time the big muscles get strong. And that's what you find is a big problem with, say, bodybuilders is they might look super strong, but you put them in an unstable environment and they look like complete dog shit. So if you're training athletes, you have to use the chaotic method fairly regularly in order for the strength to transfer to stability. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about training smart while aging. And I didn't think there was any better person to talk to than Stan Efforting. But when I train, I feel neurologically fatigued when I'm done with the workout, but if I had to, I could do that workout the next day. some of this earlier and it's absolutely crazy delicious yep. and this is a meal that I'll cook up in the morning it takes you know while I'm preparing the kids for school and then I'll make a couple extras you're still going to be really strong when you're 65 path of not only learning how to stay strong but get insanely healthy at the same time